All right, today's video, I'm gonna talk about systems and layers, layers of control in system. And when I say control, I'm not just talking about control of, in today's world, everybody thinks of, you know, government controlling everybody. I'm not just talking about government control, I'm talking about, you know, control of electricity, the control of water, the control of people, the control of keeping animals under control, just all kinds of different systems and flow charts of control, and how they all interact with each other. Now. Most people don't understand anything more than one layer. Like, people only understand a specialized, you know, they're an expert in one specialized area, but they're not, uh, you know, they don't have a broad education. They don't, you know, have a very thorough knowledge in a lot of things. They only have a lot of knowledge in one thing. And I think the way to be is to have a broad education because when you're specialized in just one thing, um, you have so much fear of trying to escape that one thing. Um, you know, what if that system breaks down? What if that system doesn't work anymore and you're an expert on it? What are you going to do for, you know, a business or a job or, you know, how, you, how are you going to survive when that's the only information that you have retained in your head for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 60, you know, depending on how old you are. You know, if you understand, the more systems that you understand, the more uh, synchronicity you see between them. Um, you'll start to see all these similarities between how things are controlled in the world. And if you can understand, you know, one system of control, you can understand any of the systems of control. You don't have to be an expert on, on the individual components of that system. You just have to understand the flow chart to have that visual mapping in your mind of how things flow between each other. Now, looking at this here, I mean, I've got like these little Russian, the Russian dolls. Everybody's seen these little Russian dolls where one fits inside the other, fits inside the other, fits inside the other. This is representative of every system of control out there. Uh, you know, whether you're controlling electricity to water or whatever. And, and in the example of, you know, electricity and water, um, you know, I write electronic music, and when I try to explain, you know, how I'm manipulating sound, with, I'm just explaining that I'm not manipulating sound, I'm manipulating the flow of electricity. You know, it's similar to, you know, how an electrical, electrical engineer would build a system and use, you know, resistors and capacitors and, you know, all this uh, filters and whatever to to restrict the flow of current. Now, when I explain to somebody, I, I, I use the example of water, because everybody understands how water flows. I mean, water flows down the rivers and down the mountains, and, you know, it, it goes to the least path of resistance via, you know, your, your gravity system. Now, electricity works the same way. It goes to the least path of resistance. Now, it's a different type of attraction that pushes the electrical current in different ways, is much the same as as the water but i mean the water is flowing via electricity anyway as well i mean if you if you want to break it down even you know to the granular level of the water molecule and why it's being attracted to this you know the bottom of the hill it's the same thing it's it's an it's an electrical attraction current electrical current it's a it's a flow of of thought it's a flow of energy it's a flow of you know, th thinking of like, you know, two magnets, you know, you put the same ends together, they push away from each other. If you put the opposite ends, they suck to each other. Systems of control and layers of control, every system works in that same manner. You just have to get through the layers of it. You just look at it in a big, you know, flow chart type of deal, and you can understand a lot of things that are going on, whether it's in the markets or whether it's in your life or whether it's physically, whether it's in your, your body, you know, or, or in your mind, any of this stuff, it, it's all relative. So, I mean, if you can understand these systems, then you can free yourself. As I was going through, you know, all the com complexities, if you think of like, you, you know, the world right here, you've got all these complex systems. They all look similar, they all work similar, but they're, they're all intertwined and they all control different things. Now, most people are down here in the bottom and don't understand how any of them work, so, you know, they, they work within the confines of, the, you know, the little slavery circle here down in the bottom. They don't, they don't understand how to escape out of these little layers. Uh, the people that understand all these concepts, they, they move up these layers. 
and then they move, you know, the farther they move up, the more freedom, the more, the less control is placed on them because of, of their knowledge. You know, that knowledge is power. Now, I'm going to bring up a painting, going completely on a different tangent here. But it, it's all, you know, it's all going to make sense. It's all going to make sense in the, in the big grand theme of things. This is a painting by George uh, Tooker. It's called The Waiting Room. And it's actually based on a theory, Sigmund Freud theory, where most people have ideas. And they have, you know, who, who knows how many? It's just thousands, thousands, maybe millions, billions, whatever, of ideas that pop in their head all the time and they just sit in their mind. And some of them sit in their minds, you know, and they just sit in this in this waiting room, they, in these compartments, you know, these numbered compartments, just sitting in the in their mind, you know, just never escaping, never growing, never connecting, because there's walls in the way. They're, they're just spaced out, you know, away from each other. They're all growing old, and they're never getting any younger. They just kind of sit around and mope along. And now, if you look at this lady in the middle here, she's she's got this idea. But since it's sitting in this little compartment here, it's never going to escape. But she does have the magazine. She's got this magazine where, you know, the, the magazine is, you know, the epitome of what she wants to become. <laughs> and the painting is awesome because it has, you know, what she, everything that she wants to become right there on the back of the magazine while she's reading it. So it's like, it's like her alter ego that doesn't exist. Or at least she won't let it exist because she's... She's got fear. She's got fear that, you know, she'll be ridiculed or that she'll fail, that or that she'll be she'll go through some type of pain, you know, that she wouldn't be able to bear. And that's the problem. And most people can't overcome that. So none of these ideas ever manifest into anything. And they stay in these little compartments. Um, I mean you could you could call these cubicles, you know, in the in the world of in the scheme of things, you know, <laughs> these are these are the cubicles of life. Filled with ideas that never go anywhere. It's like an ant farm, but they cut off their little diggers. <laughs> and the people in the ant farm couldn't dig through the cubicle walls. They're stuck. I mean, they can step right out. I mean, you can just step right out and walk all along and, you know, connect with all these other ideas. Because they're all the same. They all look the same. They're all wearing the same color coats. They all got orange and purple on. and you know, they're, all, they're all the same. But you know, people just don't escape that. So here's another... Uh, uh, George Tucker, I think is what his last name is. Um, this is representative of a, a, a false awakening, which is, uh, if you're not familiar with the concept, is like a, it's like when you're dreaming, and you wake up in the dream, and you go do your normal stuff that you would do throughout the day, uh, and then some, at some point during the dream, you notice that something's out of place, and at that point, you realize you're dreaming. So then you wake up, and it happens again. It's kind of like Groundhog Day, but uh, for most people, it's... Uh, Frightening. Like, in Groundhog Day, the movie, you know, Bill Murray, he figured it out, and then he made his life fantastic, even though the same day it was occurring over and over and over. There was times where he was depressed, but, you know, for the most part here, people have, basically have a false awakening <laughs> their entire life. Uh, they just, uh, and, at some, and at some point, you know, as they get older and they, they wake up every day, just more and more fear gets instilled. And eventually they turn into these little guys over here in the corner just hiding in the wall that, you know they're they're so scared that they don't want to they don't want to wake up again they don't want to they don't want to realize that it's it's all a big farce <laughs> you know like just hold on to that fear and they don't move past it you know in this in this dream here this guy is is so far down the hole that you know he can't escape this little box here cuz he doesn't understand how all this stuff out here works if you could get past the fear and understand these concepts I mean, you could easily walk right through this grade right here and, uh, you know, ask this guy for a cigarette, you know, he'd be like, yo, what up, what up, Holmes? Give me a cigarette. And he'd be like, all right. And then you'd be like, uh, how do I get out of this place? And he'd be like, oh, no worries, man. Just go up the stairs. And you're like, all right. I'm going to go up the stairs. That was fucking easy. <laughs> I'm on my way to uh, freedom. <laughs> I'm going to get up there and be free. Where uh, in the movie The Inception, he knew he was dreaming, so he, it was possible for him to do anything. But he was aware. He was aware uh, of the of the fear, and he was aware that you know he was in the dream. All these people are not aware that they wake up every day and go through the same dream over and over and over. Now, if you're in a dream, there's only 
three ways to wake up from it. One is that you notice that something's out of place. The dream that you consider your reality, much like in the Inception, you, you think that that's your reality, so you're not going to notice anything that's out of place. The other two are pain and gravity. Now, gravity was the one in the Inception movie. That one's where you can, you know, he spins the top and it never falls over. So he knows that he's dreaming. So to wake up from the dream, you, you have to still pain. You know, run into a wall or something. Then you wake up. I mean, that'd be the easiest one. Because if you run into a wall and you're really in reality, it doesn't, doesn't hurt that much. In the dream, you ran into the wall and then you woke up. My point is here that in reality, the only way you're going to really awaken and the, the only way that most people awaken is by either going through pain themselves or learning from the pain of others. Now, when you think about learning from the pain of others, you can do that by learning history or learning, uh, you know, what didn't work, you know, what, what you know, so you read about some story where some guy went bankrupt. Why did he go bankrupt? How did he, you know, what was the pain that he went through to get through that? I mean, if you can learn about that, then, you know, you can walk right through this gate and go ask that guy for a cigarette and be like, later, Holmes, and you're up the stairs because you know that that's the way to go. But if you didn't know that's the way to go and you turned the other way and went down this, you know, cavern down below where it's just a maze of crap, you know, and you're bored and you get stuck in, you know, get, get stuck in these cubicles, you know, your idea never escapes. You know, you gotta you get, get out of this, this maze, man. <laughs> go over here to the right. Go up the, go up the stairs. That's the way out. <laughs> get, get through this layer. But you're not going to get through the layer unless you understand your weaknesses. If you don't understand the holes that you have in your knowledge. Because if you don't understand that this thing right here is not a fence, you know, that, that you can actually walk through this if you turn it, you know, if you didn't understand that system, you would be stuck in here. And the only way that you see to go is either down or back down the hallway you just came from, which, you know, puts you back down in uh, Groundhog Day. <laughs> you just go in a loop, continuous loop forever. <laughs> that's boring. <laughs> Who wants to do that? That's that's insanity. That's uh, Einstein's uh, uh, definition of insanity. He's doing the same thing over and over and over. I hear that, like everybody to say that quote, like, like nonstop. It's like everything I freaking read. It's like the same quote. I'm like, come on, can you, can you be original? Can't you talk about, you know, John Wayne over here? Like, I think that's what he, that's the guy, right? The actor or whatever. No, that John Wayne's the, John Wayne's the country dude. I'm trying to think of that dude from the 50s or whatever. He always looked cool. <laughs> like, like Grease, like the movie Grease. He's like John Travolta over here. He's like, yeah, hey man, here's a cigarette, you know? <laughs> All right. It's so moving along. Uh, here's an investment I made. Uh, I bought this book for six dollars, and if you look look on uh, Amazon for it, um, it's like somewhere between forty and like one hundred and fifty bucks. I mean, that's a better, that's way better. That's the best investment I ever made. <laughs> so, so they have that book, and then uh, this book talks about the concepts that I'm talking about. Where you know, there's always the systems are always so big, you can always. I don't want to say like sneak around or get around it because that's not really what you're doing. You just, you understand the system. So you know how to work with it is more along the lines. And this is a great book. The guy's libertarian. So I don't know what your views on politics are, but uh, everything in this book makes absolute sense. I highly recommend this book. And it's another great investment. I spent $20 on or something. And <laughs> if it was, uh, mine's kind of beat up though, but if it was brand new, you know, $300, like really? <laughs> You know, it's out of print. You're not going to find it anywhere unless you buy it on here. But 